Good afternoon. Thank you for the introduction. Well, I will start by providing a brief outline of the work. And well, I will show some neurophysiological data from which we will introduce a model of primary motor cortical cells by means of subriemannian instruments. Well, here our main contribution consists on uh, mm, defining a distance in this space uh, which will be applied to solve an open question arose in a neurophysiological paper. More specifically, we will provide an analysis on motor primitives, also called as movement fragments, through a grouping algorithm based on our distance. Uh, we just mentioned that uh, our distance can be applied also for our phenomenological problems, but we won't talk about this in this uh, uh, type of presentation. Well, the object of study uh, concerns the area of the primary motor cortex, which is the uh, red zone here, which is the motor area that is most directly connected to the spinal cord, and hence, it is uh, the area most involved uh, in the control of voluntary movements. And uh, moreover, we specify that uh, the neural paper on which we are focusing uh, con are concentrated on the specific action of reaching. For example, in a work of 1984, it was found that the cortical activity was linked uh, to the selectivity of specific movement variables. On the right, it is displayed a typical experimental setting where at the center here, there are displayed many trajectories of movements. Uh, uh, these movements are also called as center out tasks, uh, where at the outside, it is, uh, there are represented the corrective activity of a single neuron in response uh, to the particular movement direction. And then, uh, what emerged uh, in this study was that single cells, uh, uh, single M1 neurons, are selective for hence movement direction. And even if it, it is not shown in this representation, even by changing the starting initial point of the movement, well, the cortical activity changes as well. And well, maybe what is interesting is that if uh, the data were these, uh, when one would arrive to a model very similar to the one of vision. But actually, there are also other data showing uh, that uh, M1 neurons are not selective for a static movement direction, but there exists a time window of the order of uh, 400 milliseconds for which uh, neurons uh, are coding uh, for a movement direction varying in time. And uh, Hatsopoulos, stated that the neurons, M1 neurons, code for uh, short trajectories of movements, also called as movement fragments. On the right, it is shown the analogous continuous graph of the arrows uh, moving here, where on the, uh, the x-axis there is time, and on the y, the degrees of each movement direction. So we started our model by fixing a parameter, a, a purely kinematic space, where we consider the time, the positions, and movement direction theta, and also speed and acceleration along the movement direction theta, which are also variables encoded in M1. Added to the feature space, we considered the differential constraints operating on the variables. And so, for example, if theta is the movement direction, then Evidently, the tangent of theta can be expressed also as the derivative of y with respect to x, and hence giving rise to the one forms omega one. And in the same way, the second one, the second kernel of one forms uh, omega two, represents the, the the direction of the velocity. Because uh, if uh, the unitary vector, if uh, cos theta sin theta is a unitary vector representing the movement direction, then its product with the dot x and dot y yields the speed. And in an analogous way, the third one for us expresses the differential relations with speed, acceleration, and time. So from this, 
uh, we consider a horizontal distribution, which is the kernel of all three one forms. Uh, and what, turns, what turned out was that uh, this horizontal distribution is spanned by three vector fields generators called by x1, x2, x3 that uh, mainly prescribe the changes in, in time, in the movement direction, and in the acceleration variables. And declaring these three vector fields to be orthonormal and those uh, our parameter space with a sub Riemannian structure. But as can we see, the parameter space is of dimension six. The horizontal distribution is spanned by only three vector fields, and hence, not all curves in this space are physically meaningful. Uh, for this reason, we have to introduce a notion of uh, admissible curves in this space as integral curve of uh, the vector fields generator of the of our horizontal distribution. And a fundamental property of our uh, uh, of the vector fields generator is that they satisfy your mandel condition and hence uh, a connectivity property holds true and a distance can be defined in the wool sp uh, feature space m this distance is also uh, uh, called as a carnot carotidori distance and it is defined as the infimum between the length of curve gamma or gamma is an admissible curve joining the two arbitrary points in the feature space. And thanks to this distance, or more precisely, thanks to a local estimate of this distance, we are able to solve a, a problem, an issue, arose in a neurophysiological paper of 2019, where in this paper, it was measured the dynamics of populations of new M1 neurons of macaque monkeys performing four limb reaching movements and uh, uh, well in this experiment uh, 100 electrodes were implanted in the arm area of m1 of the resist monkeys and it was recorded both the movement kinematic kinematics and the simultaneous activity of populations of neuron while the monkey performed uh, the act of reaching and what emerged was that uh, the activity of neurons were grouped uh, according to a specific movement direction within the workspace, coding for a particular acceleration or deceleration movement phase. I will try to explain more clearly by considering this uh, representation here, where on the left uh, it is represented a hand path over the positions plane, and on the right its correspective speed profile. And the orange color here is uh, named as a uh, neural state, and it means that there exists a, new a group of neurons which is acti active while performing exactly this acceleration phase and this particular movement direc direction. And hence, the activity of neurons decompose movement in a pattern that is very regular among time. And so in this paper, there is a question about the existence of on a distance on a s of a distance on a space of purely kinematic variables that could be able to reproduce those patterns of movement decomposition. So we, we tried to solve this uh, problem by giving uh, by using a local estimate of the distant dm by mm, exploiting an approximation result due to Nigel, Stein and Wagner from and uh, I won't talk about the details of the local approximations, but we are able, uh, but this approximation um, is based essentially on two main facts. The first uh, is that uh, our, as we have already uh, said, the generators uh, of our horizontal distribution satisfy your mandel conditions. And so it is possible to provide a basis for the whole tangent space. So we have, uh, so these three vector fields are obtained as commutators of a higher order and the distance can be um, approximate through a weighted sum between in the increments, also called as canonical coordinates, raised to a power that takes 
into account the degree of each vector field. And hence, it takes into account the fact that we are considering these three vector fields as commutations of higher order. And well, associated to this distance, we provided the measure for this distance by introduci introducing a connectivity kernel. And um, uh, we define it as the exponential minus d squared. And uh, how it behaves? The behavior of our kernel based on a subriemannian distance, we show an example here on the left column, where we plot in white a curve over the position plane, and on the right, its corresponding speed profile. We fix a point, and we plot over a rectangle our connectivity kernel. And as it can be observed, the subriemannian kernel suitably follow, follows the tangent of the curves because it takes into account the differential constraints operating on the variables. And by contrast, we represent on the right uh, the Euclidean one, which is uh, uniform, which is a circle over the plane instead. And uh, well, another key aspect uh, for solving the movement decomposition problem was to interpret the pattern of movement decomposition here as a grouping problem. Uh, therefore, we discretize our subriemannian kernel on a set of reaching paths and obtain a real symmetric affinity matrix uh, and for which we, will we apply spectral classical analysis techniques of these affinity matrix to recover a decomposition into elementary trajectories to be compared to the neural one. We provided here a first example where we apply our connectivity kernel over a trajectory of movement performing a center out task. On the left, uh, the hand path over the position's plane, and on the right, its speed profile. And after applying our, affini our connectivity kernel here, we display on the center the affinity matrix, which is evidently split it, uh, into two main blocks, where each block represents the eigenspace uh, associated to the two major eigenvalues of the affinity matrix. And finally, we plot over our trajectory of movement the eigenvectors associated to those major eigenvalues. And uh, uh, what emerged is that uh, we obtained the, the composition into fragments uh, equal to the one stated by the neural paper. But here, uh, there's no changes. There are no changes in the curvature. Therefore, we provided another examples where our connectivity kernel is applied over a trajectory that exhibits varying slopes, both in terms of curvature and in changes in velocity. On the at in the first row, there are uh, taken curves from the neural data, where on the left, uh, always the hand, the hand path, and on the right, its speed profile. And um, here, there are many colors. So if we focus, for example, on the violet one, the violet colors uh, means that there exists a group of neurons that is active while performing those acceleration phase and uh, that are directed over the second quadrant. And this uh, type of behavior, the segmentation, identification of fragments, and classification of fragments can be reproduced thanks to our subriemannian kernel. But one can ask why exactly a subriemannian one and not other uh, kernel based on different distances? Well, one explanation is provided through this uh, little representation where we zoomed a uh, mm, part of the speed profile. And for example, if we put near a, a, a cusp and we consider the, sorry, the Euclidean kernel, well, if due to the fact that yellow zone uh, represent uh, points of higher affinity, then uh, the Euclidean kernel associates nearby points belonging to different acceleration and deceleration phase, and de uh, therefore giving rise to a decomposition into fragments that does not um, split those uh, acceleration and deceleration phase, uh, which is not uh, consistent with the neural data. 
By contrast, the subramanian one follows exactly the, the tangent of the speed curve. Therefore, by using just a distance based on a, a space of purely kinematic variables, we are able to reproduce the fact that neurons, uh, mm, we are able to reproduce the pattern of movement decomposition found uh, neurally, but also we, are re we recover the model, the neural model of Atsopoulos, where neurons actually code for fragments, not only for single movement parameters. So on the right, it is displayed a schematic representation of this type of behavior. So to resume, we use the Subramanian geometry to describe a first uh, model for the behavior of neurons in M1. And uh, the distance we have provided used to recover a pattern of movement decomposition, which is consistent with neural findings. But just to give a hint for some perspectives, uh, well, the model, this type of model, seems to gradually lead to a shift uh, from a space mainly described by points, uh, kinematic points, to a space of curves, movement trajectories. And well, in the future, uh, we believe that it would be interesting to expand this model to a space of movement trajectories where, again, admissible curves and admissible distance can distances can be defined. And we believe that this could be of neural support because there are many papers stating the role, uh, the importance of mo mo movement trajectories in motor encoding. And uh, more generally, the approach of identifying a structure, applying a distance, grouping neighbor neighboring elements, and arriving to a more complex structure resembles the iterative idea and stratified process that can be, that could take place in the cortex. Thank you. Thank you very much, Caterina. <coughs> there are questions from the audience. So what kind of? Yeah, what kind of curves? The, the, uh, differentiable ones or? Uh, yes. Can I imagine? Uh, for the moment, uh, C1 curves, because, C1. yes. But uh, by referring to uh, this neural paper, well, the curves uh, segmented are almost regular and can belong to C1, 0, C1, yes. Okay. The uh, the other paper on which we are focusing on for a grouping based on a distance on a space of curves uh, mm, um, treats for fresh space, for example. And uh, there is exists a, a first notion of distance uh, in this space. But um, it is not considered the, the generate case of subramanian distance. Thank you. Basically, the, the well, and other people, I don't remember the names, but like with this, um, so some trajectories are done with like this constant uh, equiaffine speed, for example, but then in, in the, what they were showing is like for certain movements, you had sort of fragments, so you had like parts that were done with like constant equiaffine speed, but then constant affine speed, and then sometimes like Euclidean speed. And so there was clearly, and sometimes you, there was like a mixture of all these geometries even in along a complex movement. I so I, I was wondering if maybe this, this kind of fragmentation, first, if this geometry could explain the, the invariance of the speed, but also if this kind of fragmentation maybe gave some hint about like when the changes mm. happen, if you want. Well, I totally agree. Indeed, it has been very hard to select uh, one thing to deal with, but uh, we believe that uh, this type of mm, invariance between curvatures in um, 
a constant affine speed can be um, introduced uh, in the model, uh, for example, at the beginning, while setting the, those one forms here. If we consider other constraints, uh, uh, well, why not? <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, I, I agree for the mixture of information. And yes, uh, it takes a, a lot of work, actually. So, yes, hopefully one converges, but I don't know. <laughs> but so I think that the model of Berthaud's Benken was a model of motion of the head. Maybe. Uh, maybe ah, also yeah. the hand. Okay. I see. I see. Excellent. Mm. Right. Right. Okay. Thanks. Other questions? Yeah. Very much. Sorry, I didn't hear so, very well. So if we, uh, we uh, consider these generators here uh, on the manifold, huh? you have three generators. You have uh, uh, a, uh, a, a commutator space span the six dimensional space. Uh, would it be feasible to do something like, let's uh, say, uh, a, a max pulling over the Riemannian balls? So that would be a, a morphological group conclusion over, over, uh, over this, uh, over this, uh, this manifold? Because that would be nice to, <coughs> to, uh, to, to, to uh, give the, the, the separate elements a, a different color. And uh, yeah. well, I was thinking that if you do, can you identify elements if they are uh, close enough? Uh, the kernel has, to, you have this distance approximation. Uh, we use the, the, uh, the, the approximation with the weight of the, uh, the rotation of the Lee uh, the, the I think. Sorry. Uh, um are you asking for uh, a subramanian uh, for a kernel yeah. uh, a different visualization? Uh, yeah, to, to, to say, okay, uh, these kernels are in our environments, and I want to uh, group certain elements. So I, from the data, I pull the maximum out of the ball to uh, to basically complete. Uh, if you have partial information, to uh, to do some extrapolation of information, or to, to complete lines, or to identify which points have to be connected, or, or which line segments have to be connected. Or, or these lines, sorry? Yeah, which, 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 uh, these yeah. because the distance she is using uh, is exactly the same distance which is level lines of uh, yeah. operators in the space. Yeah. So th using this distance and making grouping with this distance, yeah. that uh, matrix, uh, the affinity matrix, give a weight, uh, a different weight depending on the distance of a couple of points, uh, yeah. which is another way to saying what you are saying. Yeah. But yeah. indeed, uh, she is also, she has also working with geodesics, right? Mm -hmm. Because, uh, so I think uh, this approach is not that far from what you are saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, yeah, yeah. you have, uh, of course, because you use uh, the logarithmic approximation, yeah, the, the yeah. weighting, uh, The, the last question, maybe, from the audience. Otherwise, I have a very, very short question. <coughs> I like very much your model, um, but uh, the, the primary motor co cortex is very complicated. It's more complicated than V1. Uh, so it is uh, referred to a very small part of uh, M1. Uh, so how to generalize this model uh, to have a real model of the motor cortex? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, in, in the motor area, there exists uh, three maps overlapping. Uh, there exists a map of uh, actions, a map of soma uh, the somatotopic map, the, homo the motor homunculus, and there is also a map of positions. Hence, uh, in this work, uh, as you mentioned, uh, we have focused only on the arm area, um, uh, Lo hand location in upper space uh, and uh, the action of reaching. 
So one can move uh, by translating over uh, another type of action, another uh, somatotopic part, or uh, yes, something. Thank you very, very much. Let's uh, thank the speaker again. Thank you.